Hey everyone, how's it going? You may not know who I am, but I've been playing this game for about three years, ever since the Alliance Black Mage patch came, and I've re-rolled multiple times from playing on NA Reboot, switching to EE Reboot because of ping, and I even had a chance to try out some KMS Luna before Neighbor shut down. Over the past years, GMS has done some changes, and the game has felt differently from the first time that I've played until now, and not always in a good way. I feel the need to make a long-winded video about this subject, so sit down, grab some popcorn, buckle up, because this is going to be a long one. If you want to skip certain subjects, you can look at the timestamps in the video or look them down in the description. Now, let's start off with gearing. I was going to make a whole spreadsheet to compare exactly the gear difference, but it's very hard to perceive. So instead, here's the side-by-side -side comparison as I talk. Feel free to pause at any moment if you need to. So like I said before, the first time that I played was during the Black Mage Alliance event patch, and when I first started playing, I would kill Golok's shoulders and chest for three times a day and they would give one coin each, so that's nine coins in the very least. And in less than a month, I had my first ring or two, I don't remember exactly how long it took. By the time that I started upgrading gear, I had all the accessories, plus some event ones, that I could ever need for Mezzo and Drop gear, as well as damage gear, and I started working towards one-shotting mobs, and at around 215, and definitely before 225, and a weak legion of under 2k, and barely a full set of links, I was able to one-shot. Now, I'm not really one to buy power items from events. I think there's value in buying cosmetics that might be exclusive to that event or hard to come by in the future, and I never really got that much power off of them, except maybe the event rings. When re-rolling into EU in search of better ping, I instead focused on Legion. I worked my way towards 5.5k before the compensation rolled out and skewed my goal of getting to 6k Legion. And instead, I started to work on a uh, main, blazing through the levels of 200 to 210, the point where I wanted to start investing into gear, I had several problems. I couldn't do Princess Snow questline for the treasure set because it's no longer a thing, and I was too weak to kill her. I couldn't kill high enough Golics or farm shoulders and chest to get coins, and there were no event rings at the time, so instead I had to do something that I would never expect to have to do in a video game. I went back to older, weaker content from when I first played the game, here's looking at you, Noble Iphias Ring, so that I could get some gear. I got Ranmaru for shoulders, I got CHT for accessories, and so on. I will say that as a returning player, this feels awful. It felt like ending a relationship, finding someone new, having a better time, but they don't really put that much effort into the relationship, and you're the one having to pick up all the slack. And the worst part is, that previous relationship is right there waiting for you with open arms, but you can't really deal with their constant issues. All of the ping issues, server stability, everything like that. After all of this, I kept working on gear and blazing through levels, constantly trying to get more mezzo and gear so that I could maybe almost one-shot, sort of, finally starting to one-shot past 235, but still constantly needing to chase that next upgrade whenever I had to go into a new map. And all of this is considering that I have a compensation issue with Arcane Bow. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Masta, you said yourself that you blazed through the levels. The le game is easier. And yes, I did. Yes, leveling was way faster. But you know what I had less of? Fun. Constantly having to chase that damage to keep up with the demands of reaching higher level areas, struggling with mobs just not dying, it's just not fun. And... If you think about it, whenever you go into a new map and you struggle to one-shot there, your rates are gonna suffer. So instead of things being faster because you're reaching higher levels, things slow down, and you kinda wanna go back and stay at lower levels just so you can keep having good rates. Now with all of that said, here are the two major differences between my two characters. One is 21k stat and one is 31k stat. One of them has totems which will eventually come back, one of them has a badge which will not, and one of them has a heart which I could have gotten on the other character, but I've never really bothered to. But again, it's something that it will eventually come back. On top of all of this, there's the Gullick set difference. And you can also just look at the gear itself and you can very plainly see which one has more mezzo invested into it. It's not, not very hard to see. Nodes are also a major problem. They've increased the amount of droplets with the reduction of EXP, but they've yet to increase neither the mezzo nor the node acquisition rate along with them. For comparison, my bishop has almost maxed benediction, almost maxed boost nodes, and I even invested some into the fire poison and ice lightning. 
Hell, looking back on it now, Chain Lightning was one-shotting at level 233 and barely level 20 nodes, and Paralyze was one-shotting with level 30 nodes before that. This is the point where I went back into my script and changed the levels in my previous segment. <laughs> Meanwhile, my Wind Archer maxes boost nodes with 3 nodes and barely any 5th job skills over 5. Leveling might be easier, but that's the only thing that is so far. Which brings me to my last point, which is what sparked this whole video to begin with. Cubes and flames. What a shit show last patch was, right? I distinctively remember a period on my bishop where I would get 3-4 to four flames and maybe one cube daily from daily bosses every day on each character. Granted the odds were stacked as per the flame scandal, but up until last patch I was lucky to get 2 or 3 flames from weekly bosses, not dailies. Once again, I'm needing to pick up the slack, I need to throw mezzo that I don't have into flames in order to get something. Last patch just dialed that all up to 11. And I know that they went back on the nerf, but they only went back on the nerf for cubes, not for flames. So this problem still is dialed up to 11. It's hard to compare the two, given the RNG differences, but from a player perspective, I distinctly remember flaming items on the bishop having access flames and throwing them onto non-boss items because I could, while I remember throwing things into the Wind Archer sometimes and getting kinda lucky. How much of that is due to the RNG change? Well, I'm not sure. But having a lot of shots was more fun than throwing one or two and hoping for the best. Now, this is as far as my script goes. From here on out, I'm going to completely ramble, so if you don't like that, Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time, but I am going to keep ripping at this. So I think from the last patch with their better maple and alleviating the acquisition of certain items and only making them harder, it's very easy and clear to see that Nexon either doesn't understand their own game or they don't really care. In both cases, reverting back something that was supposed to make the game better, that made the game worse, and not even giving the full thing to players is horrible. I don't understand how people are okay with it right now. Are people okay with it right now? When a company makes a change in order to try to make the game better, and they make the game worse with the intent of making it better. They don't have any regard for their own game. If they don't have any regard for their own game, how can they have any regard for us as consumers, us as players? Do they care about us as players? That is the biggest question. With the recent falling out of a lot of content creators for World of Warcraft, in case you've been living under a rock, the state of California is suing Activision Blizzard because of sexual harassment and People were already unhappy with Shadowlands, and this was just the straw that broke the camel's back. And I understand a lot of their sentiment. In my case, I was already unhappy with the game within its current state. And seeing their complete disregard for their GMS player base is the straw that broke the camel's back. At the time of recording this, I haven't turned the game on ever since patch day. I just can't bear myself to play a game whom the people making the game have no regard for the game. I just can't bear myself to do that. And while I understand that a lot of people who will see this and who have clicked on this video do so because of MapleStory and not because of anything else, I just can't do it. I'm tired of being spit in the face by Nexon. I'm just tired. As I've said before, I've been playing this game on and off for about three years and rerolled twice. And the fact that my new characters are weaker than my old ones, it makes me think, do they really care about new players and acquiring people and keeping them playing the game or are in maintenance mode and trying to keep hold of whatever they still have? at least on GMS. And I'll keep saying this, no matter how much people think that new players are not important, and the people who have stuck with your game since the very beginning are the most important people for your game, that is not true. Getting new people in and keeping them in is about as, if not more important than keeping your existing players happy. Because people grow, right? People have other things to do in life. People get jobs, people get married, people have to spend more time with their family, and the game just takes a back seat. So you have to keep bringing in new people who have the time and can look up to these people who have 
plateaued and don't really have the time to play and think that hey i can i can reach that level but whenever they look up and say hey i can reach that level and they see that when they reach that point they are not as strong as the people who are there what does that say about the game and i understand perfectly that the amount of time that it took my wind archer to reach my bishop's level is incomparable well maybe not i don't i don't know it's hard to tell played a lot less i don't know it's hard to it's hard to compare the two but when i reach the point where i can think hey i can be as strong as my previous character and i'm at the same level and i'm not how am i supposed to feel now i'm just tired i'm just tired of being treated like i don't even know and the community doesn't help it either the maple story community is probably one of the most complacent communities that i've ever talked to how many people are still upset that they haven't disclosed the rates for gms and they have for kms how many people are still upset because they gave us back some of the cubes not all and also they didn't give us back any of the flames how many people are upset because NA reboot servers are simply literally unplayable how many people are upset that some buffs stay when you log out and others don't how many people are upset because when you use a skill that goes on cooldown and you log off or DC and you come back the next day and the skill is still on cooldown? How many people are upset because there is legacy power items that haven't been given again to people who play either new characters or new things? How many people are upset that they made the gearing meta for Golux a lot harder than it was back a long time around. How many people are upset because star forcing costs are not the same as in KMS? How many people are upset that Frenzy Totem is still a thing and the only way to obtain one is through real money trading for... how much is it? Five figures? Something like that? It's absurd. How many people are upset because Nexon keeps telling them that they want to be more transparent but they're about as transparent as a brick wall? How many people are upset because Kana summons don't crit. They're the only class with summons that doesn't crit, even Jet crits. How many people are upset that if you use a vacuum skill that doesn't pull a mob onto the exact position of a platform, you get DC'd? How many people are upset because it took them a year to come up with a DMT solution and it's this abomination that they came with this time? How many people are upset that they don't disclose these kind of events ahead of time? so that people can prepare and not be constantly in the fear of missing out. How many people are upset because KMS gets spell trace fever every Sunday and GMS gets it once per major event? How many people are upset that Kana is single-handedly the best class in the game and there's no competition? How many people are upset that VAC pets are an absurdly pay-to-win feature? How many people are upset that a vac pet that only works for one character or at least the group of characters in which you got it costs as much as if not more than a pay to play subscription for a triple a game or any other mmorpg is maple story really worth that much to you is it worth more than runescape with its two games that you get access to is it worth as much as world of warcraft both in tbc classic and retail is it worth more to you than Final Fantasy XIV? Is it worth more to you than Elder Scrolls Online? I think MapleStory players have the same problem that was plaguing World of Warcraft players for the longest of times up until recently with the allegations that I said and everyone being upset with Shadowlands. I get the feeling that a lot of Maple players don't know that there are other games out there other games that will treat their players with respect and respect their time. It might sound like I enjoy shitting on games that I play. And don't get me wrong, I love pointing out bad things, I do. But it's only fun to point out things that are wrong, things that are bad, in games that you respect, games that you enjoy. For example, in Final Fantasy XIV, there's no turning animation if you use your mouse. But there is a turning animation if you use the keyboard. And I hate that. But I like the game. I respect the game. The game respects me. So it doesn't bother me. Yes, I'll point it out. Yes, I'll make fun of it. But it doesn't really bother me. The same can't be said for Maple. These things bother me. The game has a lot of potential, but it doesn't live up to the potential. I think Maple GMS needs to either sit down 
and realize that they are a different game from KMS and go their own way, make the game for the Western audience, or they need to sit down and realize that they're spending too much money doing that and they need to make the game a carbon copy of KMS. As a last resort, they need to realize that GMS is not profitable, so let's open up a way for players all around the world to play on KMS. I think that's what needs to happen. So until that day, I guess this is it. There is a sentiment that happens in all games, not just in Maple, in which people who complain about things that are wrong with the game, they get told to just quit if they don't like it. People only complain about things that they care about, things that they enjoy, things that they want to succeed. Because if you didn't care, then you would just let things be shit. You would just let things burn to the ground. Who cares, right? But when the game that you don't complain about also doesn't care about you, then why should you do it a favor and complain about it? Why would you strive to improve it? There's something that I've said in previous videos the last time that I quit playing Maple, is that the only reason that I would want to play the game is to make content for it, and that's what I've been doing. But I don't feel like Maple deserves my time anymore. To paraphrase Schubert, when we're faced with something huge, we're just specks of dust, pathetic beings. And I know a lot of you are here because I've played Maple. A lot of you came from the badges video, and I'm happy that you enjoyed enough to subscribe, but I also have to say that I'm sorry. I just can't be this voice to a game that doesn't respect me. Is this a final goodbye? I don't know. All I know is I'm happy you were here and thank you so much for watching. Damn. In the end, we all become stars. <laughs>